Sam. And a lot sure. of people that told I would be interviewing you were curious about your opinion about, I think, you know, most likely one of the biggest impacts in this field recently, iOS 14 update. Yeah. <laughs> this and the newer news about the meta, meta, metaverse, Facebook, Instagram, everything yep. tanking a bit. It's like, how do you see the whole field develop in like the next 12 month, 18 months? Do you have anything where so well? I think it's good for advertising because it will be cheaper. People yeah. in the recession, there will be less companies that have marketing budget. Or do you think no, it will be worse because there are less customers? Do you have any inclination to say, mm, I assume it will be this way or that way? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's some good questions there and of, you know, stuff I've thought about so much, right? So if we start with iOS 14, um, the narrative around Facebook and Instagram advertising massively changed with iOS 14. I said that. So I was advertising on the platform in 2013. And from then until really until the iOS, the first iOS 14 changes came in um, in January 21, so almost two years ago, um, and before that, we had an inkling that there was going to be some issues. But really, up until then, it was all super positive. Results continued to get better. Everyone was super happy. There were all these success stories coming out about millionaires that were made because of Facebook ads and all that sort of stuff. So it was really positive. And then with the iOS 14 changes, that made things more difficult. And it did lead to a drop off in results. I think a lot of people think the drop off in results were, was actually greater than it was. A lot of the difference was reporting. So if we can't track what iOS users are doing, and we can to some extent, but not completely, then some of those purchases that your Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns are generating are just simply not being registered in your ad account. So results look worse. Now, the people that have been advertising pre the iOS 14 changes were just annoyed. They wanted those old results back, right? Yeah. They wanted, they didn't want to see, let's say a 15% drop in actual results and a 30% drop in what's being reported. That was yeah. not fun. And I understand that. And it was compounded to some extent because just before those iOS 14 changes came into play, we were in lockdown in a lot of you know the major markets we advertise in. So results were actually artificially good during those times because people were locked at home on their phones, laptops, all, all that sort of stuff. Everything, yeah. It was yeah. Like so the comparison, exactly. So the comparison between those artificially good results and then the drop off iOS 14 was 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 annoying. We've had long enough now after the iOS 14 changes to have reached like a stable level with that. Um, and it's not ideal, but it's fine. It's basically where I'd, where I'd sit with that. The other platforms haven't been as affected by similar things as I was expecting. I still think that's going to come. You see, you know, anyone who logs into a Google Analytics account will see that they're retiring Universal Analytics um, next July. And what's that going to do to tracking for Google ads and YouTube ads and things like that, for example, well, that's going to, that's going to have an impact. So there, there are other things that are going to come into play. And I think other platforms are probably going to get to Facebook's level. They were just sort of hit a little bit earlier with this stuff. So that's sort of fine. And that's stable and Facebook and Instagram advertising can continue slightly impaired from what it was previously, but that's just life, right? doesn't mean it can't be work really well for businesses. And we've got hundreds of clients that are still generating great results. The I think a lot of agencies, yeah, um, is also absolutely underutilized the on-platform retargeting with yeah. organic content and stuff yeah. and like that, like doing a video for one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then targeting the people that looked at this video for more than 50%, for example, because it's a boring video about a topic, yeah. highly specific. So you know, people who watch this for a few minutes are very likely to take this topic like seriously, or to be into this yeah. kind of topic that was, in my opinion, what I saw massively underutilized. Yeah, no, I, like yeah, I agree. And that's, and that's a shift that we when we made as an agency and lots of people have made is okay, if we're going to, we can't rely as much on off platform activity to be able to retarget and also for source audiences for things like lookalike audiences. Okay, well, let's keep people then on platform and do a lot of that. So you can find creative ways to do a lot of the same things and get that data. Um, more and more advertisers have switched from generating leads via their website to leads within Facebook via what's now called instant forms. Um, so, so there's, there's ways of, of, of doing that and it's, yeah, it's, it's not ideal, but it, it just is what it is. Just like it wasn't ideal that Facebook ads became more popular over, you know, the, let's say from 2015 to 2019 yeah. and the costs were increasing because there was more competition that, that wasn't ideal either, but doesn't mean it can't work. And it's just something you've got to live with. So the other thing that you asked was around the recent news around Meta. And we saw in Q3 that they had a significant drop in profitability. 
and publicly traded company. They need to disclose all that information. And if you look, if you dig into the numbers of it, which I have, you'll see that revenue is relatively consistent down a touch when you compare quarter to quarter, year over year. But these fluctuations happen. Anyone that owns a business will say, you know, these fluctuations happen. The reason why profitability dropped so much was because they have been investing a ton of resources into the metaverse. So they've been hiring lots and lots of very expensive people in order to build that. And that's led to a big drop in profitability. That led to Mark Zuckerberg making the comments around, we're going to lay off the 11,000 people or so, because um, obviously he wants to increase that profitability back up. Now, you know, just a little metaverse aside, I don't <clears throat> think that's a great bet for Meta. I think it'd be much better off focusing on their cash cows, which is Facebook and Instagram, and improving improving that platform for both users and yes. advertisers, because you need both. That's really important. Yeah, but just in terms of how this affects advertisers, that announcement, advertisers are reacting to the news like they are investors in Meta, and they're not. So the share price, which is going to be dictated by things like profitability, is going to drop. That's bad if you're invested. But if you're an advertiser, that doesn't affect you. What affects you as an advertiser is the number of users. So the day that I get worried about the viability of Facebook and Instagram advertising going forward is when the number of users start to drop dramatically. When we start seeing really big drops in that, that's when I'm worried. Provided the users are there, there's always going to be value to advertisers because at the end of the day, that's all you're really buying with Facebook and Instagram ads. You're buying eyeballs. You're buying attention. And then it's your job as an advertiser to convince that those people to go ahead and convert that ad copy, creative, all that sort of stuff. But you're buying attention. Um, so actually, ironically, I think this this sort of news is positive for most advertisers because avat some advertisers are going to see that. They're going to act like investors, which they shouldn't, but they will. They're going to leave or people who are starting their businesses thinking where to advertise or think, well, I won't advertise there. Instead, I'm going to advertise on something like TikTok because that's the new up and comer. And that's going to reduce the number of advertisers. The cost of Facebook ads is set by an auction. So the less competition, the cheaper it is. So those of us that are going to stick around on the platform, we should see cheaper CPMs. And we absolutely are already seeing that. So if you compare this Black Friday that just ended to previous year's Black Friday, the CPMs were definitely lower. Um, we've seen numbers reported as high as, say, 50% lower on Facebook. Uh, the, the discrepancy rate between last year and this year on Instagram is smaller than that. Um, it seems like actual ads on Facebook have, have had a bit more of a hit, but uh, but that could be good for advertisers. Is it good for agencies? Probably not, because you want there to be tons and tons and tons of businesses um, yeah. wanting to advertise on the platform because that's more services. But then on the flip side of that, maybe you'll have higher attention with your clients because they're getting better results. Yeah. So with agencies, it's maybe a little bit negative, but not too bad. For actual businesses, people running ads for their company, wanting to sell products or services, I think the bad news is a net positive. If you like this clip, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see another clip, click here. Or if you want to see the whole interview, click here.